So uh, good afternoon. Uh, appreciate you being here. Uh, we do not have any announcements. We did not make any trades today. Uh, the only move we've made here over the last time period has been the Cashner deal. So um, I'm open to any questions that anybody would like to ask. Right, Johnny, are you disappointed, Gary? I'm not disappointed. I mean, I, anytime um, you'd like to get better, uh, anytime you can, and this is the last time you're going to be able to do that as far as trade. So under the help that you get, will now be in a position that it comes from either internal um, or people coming back from injuries or people coming up from the minor leagues. But also, we had an opportunity to make a lot of trades if we wanted. And it really came down to that we just felt that demands for what um, we were going to receive that we didn't want to pay. So ultimately, it's a decision that we decided to make. There were just, I mean, there are some players we would have traded. I guess you trade any player like we've talked about in the past. But we just didn't feel that the deals with guys, either ability, with the role they would play, with the service time that they had, being free agents in a short time period, mirrored giving up the type of players that, that we felt, especially under the circumstances that we're in. Um, I mean, we're battling for a spot. We're battling, I mean, we can hopefully we win a division, but I'm going to sit here realistically, we're probably playing first for a wild card spot, so you're playing for a one game wild card. And um, I look at that a little bit differently as far as what you're willing to do and the risk that you're willing to take. So I'm not disappointed because the ultimate decision is I, I don't know that there's a player that was traded out there that we couldn't have acquired. It's just that we didn't like the price that was asked. And I guess the other part of it is to know that as you talk about our farm system over the years, um, we're getting asked about a lot of our players that we just didn't want to make moves on. Well, we talked right to the deadline. You know, our primary focus was relief pitching. That was our primary focus. Um, not back-end type guys, because I think the reality of the back-end guys, when we start getting into those conversations, I don't, I don't know of any back-end. Well, Shane Green is one guy that moved. Um, back-end guys that any of the ones that we had on our list really moved. And I think part of that was the acquisition price. So they were more people that we felt could add another arm to our, our pen. And we tried to do that. We just didn't like the asking price. So we went right to the very end. Some people brought up positional player stuff to us today. So again, you listen to anything. And we had a lot of conver I think, I bet you I have texts from 20 general managers on my phone right now from today. Um, and more than that over the last couple of days. So we tried, but just we didn't like the price at the very end. I think if I, we were closer to first place, I would have been more open-minded to some of the other things. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, not that we're, again, not trying to get our club better, but I think and when I would say that, the club here needs to play better on a consistent basis. That's the way I look at it. We like our club. We've liked our club all year long. We're sitting, what, 10 games above 500. Um, there's a lot of great things about it. We had a great week last week. Um, but we still need to do it on a more consistent basis, and we hadn't reached that point to really, to me, give up a premium young player for a guy that was going to fill a certain role for us where we are right now. So that's the difference. Is there any, um, uh, were any of your talks centered on acquiring guys that you can control beyond this year? In other words, not rentals. And was that more of a focus, and did you come closer on any? No, I, we had really a variety of topics, rentals, long-term, really all type of conversations. So really, I mean, there are there is some uh, shortcomings for us for acquiring guys that are sh short-term. But when you have a guy for two months um, and what you have to give up for it, again, I think there's times you are willing to do that. And again, it depends upon the type of player. So we did have conversations that on those type of guys, but we also had controllable. We had them all type. No more than you, in reference to the wild card, you said you win that game and you're essentially mm -hmm. on even ground with the other three teams other than home field, obviously. Correct. Did, did that, did you seem to be backing off that today, that maybe it wasn't worth investing as much if, you, if the wild card is your only likely path to the 
No, I still feel that same way. I, I mean, but I just, I still think there's a difference between the two. I mean, I think there's, you know, there's, when you're playing one game scenarios, and, and I guess it just depends where you are. I mean, but the reality is, yeah, I, I believe that. If you win one game, you're like everybody else. And I want to get there. We want to get there. But there's also still a question mark in your mind and how much you're going to go. And the reality is, and I, and I think that if we're going to make it, it's going to be the guys that are in the clubhouse. I mean, we, that, that is the case. And so we could add pieces to that, but we have a very talented big league club. And sure, we have holes. I, I mean, we all have holes. And you could see that clubs have holes because everybody's looking to do something. The reality is we have a very talented group of players. And so I, I don't think that there was a move. I mean, like, like when I talk about our positional players last year, remember we had second base was a real hole for us at the time for a variety of reasons, injuries, non-performance. Um, we really were struggling versus left-hand pitching. We needed that. Well, we don't, we're really I'm not saying we're even a better club per se, but we're, we don't have that gaping hole for us. And we have some guys in the minor league system that we think can help us right now. You see Sam Travis comes up here, but we've sent Marco Hernandez down. We've, we, got, we have guys there we like. So you talk about starting pitching. Well, the reality is I know some guys haven't performed. Well, where are we going to get starting pitchers that are more talented than the group that we have? They're very talented. We, we just need to pitch better in some cases. And then in the bullpen, yeah, I mean, I think the, the problem for us in the bullpen, like a lot of people, is the depth. I mean, when you start getting to Barnes, I mean, the, the reality, you can't believe how many phone calls I got about our bullpen pieces. So people say you need bullpen. You cannot believe the number of clubs that called me about our bullpen guys. So it just gives you an idea of when people are looking, almost everybody can get better in their bullpen. But when you start talking about Barnes, Workman, I know Evaldi hasn't quite done it, but we're still very confident that he's going to do it. And I know somebody will say Dombrowski said that, but, but well, that's how we do believe that he's going to be very good for us out there. The young left-handers have done very well. Hernandez is really coming along, and Taylor's done well. He had a bad night last night, but he's done very well for us. That's five guys out there. Um, we're in a position where Walden's been real good in that role that he's had. Um, Embry scuffled for a while, and he was coming back from that injury. He's throwing the ball better again. So you start going through them, and then we've got Johnson coming back, who's a different type pitcher, but we do need the long relief left-hander there to – He's going to pitch for us uh, probably on Saturday. And I know people have seen it, but we think we need to straighten out Ryan Brazier. Uh, we think he's a very good big league pitcher. He's got great stuff. He's down at AAA. He's pitching very well for us. So um, I, I just didn't feel like there's that one spot that really merited. Again, we could get better in a lot of different places, but the reality is is that we're going to have to do it with the guys that are, that are here. Yeah. You know what? Sunday night was only one game. Sure. Obviously. I can't answer that because I, I think it's more a feel on how you look at your club at a particular time. But, okay, so it was nine. It could have been seven, right? Could have been six yesterday, right? Could, might be five today. The Yankees were losing three to two there in a rain delay. Well, that's a lot different than sitting there nine. And so, uh, but I can't tell you because it's more a gut reaction based upon where you are at a particular time. Well, I don't think that I was really ever on the table, but I think when our conversations the beginning of last week was more a matter of just seeing where we're going to go. Uh, we never really talked about, per se, selling when you talk about that. But in the beginning of the week, our phone calls were more of the nature of, I'm not sure where we're going at this point. So it was, and then when you get to that point, you listen and talk and, I mean, this is, a, it's like today, if I told you I had 25 trade proposals, I wouldn't, I, not that I all necessarily met, but between me making them to someone and them calling me, I started early this morning when I was driving in and started on the phone right away. But, you know, those things happen very quickly as you get near the end. And so the last week, a lot of different conversations take place and people throw all different ideas out there and you could see the number of 
don't know if you all, I know everybody's got cell phones, but the number of trades at the last minute at the deadline, it, there's a, a, a number of them. No, no, not really. I mean, we, that was our philosophy at the per, at the time. So, and actually, when I say depth, I mean you always look to improve your depth. We have some guys at AAA that are down there pitching right now that we feel comfortable to come and help us. So, uh, no, not really. You mentioned the idea of possibly selling. Did it did it kind of take that good stretch against the Rays and Yankees to uh, change that? Or? No, I didn't say about selling. Oh. He mentioned that. I didn't say that. We are at a point where you're considering that? I just said we were calling, talking about anything. I didn't say we were selling. I just said we're just we're talking to clubs just like you do. We're kind of open to anything that people would talk about. But we never talked that we were going to sell. Sean Moran. Dave, the payroll being what it is, mm -hmm. which I believe is the most money the Red Sox have spent in salary in their history or within a million or so of last mm -hmm. year, the highest in the game, is, is there a point where you look at it and say, in for a dime, in for a dollar. We've committed two hundred and forty million dollars so far. Why stop now? Why, why be uh, inactive today? That's a new one. In for a dime, off for a dollar. I haven't heard that one, so let me grab it. But uh, no, I mean, I mean, our payroll's the largest in the game. It's ample to win. That's on me and on us. I'll take me. But it's a situation where, um, yeah, would you go, like last year, we went into the philosophy of we didn't want to go above 246. Because, as I talked about, and be redundant, there's a reason why they call them penalties. It's not only financially, you lose 10 drafts, picks in the draft. So our philosophy is, is always that we don't want to go over that number because of the penalties attached. However, last year when I sat down with ownership, we thought it was worth doing that based upon where we were as a team and, and how we were playing. Uh, this year I never really approached that, but I would also tell you that in my conversations, I, mean, I had clubs come up with some unique thought processes, actually pretty pretty wise, like they take a player back for international money to give us more CBT room and all this. We didn't need more CBT room for the deals that we were talking about. So it really was a matter not of cost. And I think if I, I mean, I can't speak for John and Tom and Mike Gordon because I, I didn't present it to them, but I've in my heart said, hey, this deal makes the difference. They've never said no to me. Oh, sure. History, so why not go for it? Sure. Well, I mean, and we are going for it. It's just that you still have to say, I mean, it's like every year you go for it, I think, as much as you can. But somebody, I know you sent me that note. Yeah, we're, we're in. We're all in. But the all in is, to me, with what we have. And if you said, and I'm not going to use players' names, we'd have traded this prospect or that prospect, we could have had this player. Well, that could have happened, but we just decided we did not want to do that. And you make those decisions every year. Dan, back right. Dave, a lot of times you're there at the trade deadline, you know, the players are full of confidence, what have you. What's your opinion, basically, of those, those guys in the clubhouse? Do you say anything to them, or is that Alex through to you is basically this is our group, let's go? This is our group, let's go. I, I mean, that's it. I mean, this is, but you know, we didn't make a trade on the trading deadline day last year. We did get Cashner already, so it's not like we haven't done something to help our ball club. And we wonder, and we brought Evaldi back. We think he's just raw, raw, kind of rounding into shape now to be ready. I mean, I, I couldn't find anyone else throwing 101 that we think that, so we think he's a nice addition. Um, we think we added Darwinson and Hernandez here recently. So sometimes they come in different ways. And, um, you know, it, it's a situation that if we can get in and, you know, play the one-game playoff, I know, like, for example, Houston made big trades today. And they're really good. But they were good beforehand. If we play Houston, 
it will be in the playoffs, right? So we'll see what happens. But we have, I mean, if we play up to our capabilities with our guys in our starting rotation, we can, I think, beat anybody. And when you look at it, I mean, I talk, look at Workman's numbers, who is, as a back-end guy, and compare them to anybody else in baseball and see where they are. And we feel comfortable giving him the ball in the ninth inning with a one-run lead, not only with his stuff, but his makeup. Look at Barnes's numbers. They're really good. Look at, I mean, I know you, at the ability, I can't tell you look at the numbers because Evaldi hasn't done much of it. But we like those guys back there. So, um, yeah, we're, we feel confident in the group that we have. We have to still go do it. No, my frustration is that we just haven't played well enough as a team. And um, I think we're all frustrated at that time. But last week we were great, right? I mean, we played, we were 5-2 and two last week against two of the best teams in baseball, two of the better teams. And maybe we'll still go 5-2 and two this week. So we'll see. We have those capabilities. We had, you know, we had a tough game last night. We could have won. Um, it was one of those games that we had a chance to win and we didn't get it done. But that happens. But we like our club. And we actually overall have been playing pretty well for an extended time period it's just that we have to continue to do that going forward. Dave, with this year being different and having just the one hard deadline, what is your impressions of just other teams' willingness to engage in talks uh, during this time? And now that you have some hindsight with just how much activity there was just surrounding trades overall, given everyone's standing? Well, I don't think, I know that a lot's been played on the one um, deadline. And I understand it. And there are some definite differences. But in our situation, it really did not change our approach at all compared to other years. And it's really quite simple because when you have a real good record like we have had the last three years, that I, no player, basically no player makes it through waivers that we could acquire in a trade and pass the trading deadline. So when it got to August, there was hardly anybody we could claim. Usually the guys that got through at that point were either were usually high salary type players were the ones that were clearing because people were afraid to claim and I know waiver process gets to be quite complicated. Um, if you need a lesson, you can see Kevin afterwards. I'll be happy to do that with you. But it, it's a situation where um, it really didn't change our approach. I think where it probably changed some approaches is that if you had a player you were going to trade and they were of dollar value, those clubs know they needed to get it done now. And I don't know if it made any difference, and I don't even, I, I have no idea where their thought processes were. But for example, if you see a couple years ago, Houston did not trade for Justin Verlander before the trading deadline with the thought process that they could, I, I'm guessing trade for him after the deadline because they'd get waivers on him. This year they traded for Granke before the deadline. So I think it, in that type of scenario that made a difference. But I can't speak for their thought process, but from an outsider looking at it, I would say in that scenario there is a difference in the trading deadline, but very few circumstances and really didn't affect us at all. Mm -hmm. Well, I still hope we win our division. I mean, I don't mean to, but the, realistically, that's what you're saying. We want to win our division. So realistically, there are three teams ahead of you. Mm -hmm. The A's, Indians, and the Rays, each of whom all made changes mm -hmm. in the last day today. Excuse me. Why do you have confidence that to date you haven't been able to pass those teams? Between now and the end of the season, you will be able to, having not made a move. Well... I think there's a couple of factors. One is I think we have a talented group of players um, and that, that we have the ability to play better than what we have. That's one. Secondly, I think you have to be careful, and that is true when you look at the whole, but it's a, it's a situation where pick a date out, pick out uh, after we were eight games below 500. Well, since then, we played 18 games above 500. So if we keep playing at that pace, we would pass them. So. It's just a matter, I think, that we're talented enough to do it, and we'll find out if we do or we don't.
I didn't find that there was a significant difference maker out there to help us play better. And we'll see sometimes. I mean, I've been in clubs that you make trades. I've done it myself, where I make a trade at the trading deadline. I'm thinking, wow, this is great. I'm gonna, we're going to be a lot better. It doesn't always make you that way. Sometimes there's different circumstances. People have to move. People don't perform as well. They get hurt. And there's been a couple times in my career where I have just felt great about this t and today, making a deal. And the whole industry is patting you on the back, and it didn't work. So you have to still go out there and play. And I think it's up to us as a club to go out there and play, because I think we're talented enough to win. And do you feel you have more confidence now, having not made a trade, I having made a trade? That I think I had had the same confidence one way or the other that we'd go out there and play well. Sure. Despite the numbers that you cite, that perception still exists sure. this year. Why do you feel like that is such an issue with the group of relievers that you have out there? And what can you do to combat that? Well, I can't do anything to combat it. The thing I would tell you is that, and I know we get, and it's not my problem, other clubs, but I would say that how many clubs are in contention? 18, 20, that 16 or 17 were trying to improve their bullpen because of that same perception. It's, it's an area because you have eight guys in your bullpen, so you can always get better. And the reality is, is where most clubs get exposed with their bullpen is when you get short starts. And our club is built to get longer starts than four or five innings. When we got to start pitching six innings, and I think you could see it, and Alex has talked about, not Alex Spear, Alex Cora, that we're in a position where we do, that we do better. And, and I think that's just the way it is. And I can't, as long as I've been in the game, wherever I've been, and we read all the paper, I read them all the time, that pretty much is consistent. Everywhere I talk to, they say, I, Clubs that are, I need bullpen help. I need bullpen help. I need bullpen. I had a list of clubs that needed bullpen help, and there were almost as many clubs that were in playoff contention. So that's just the way it is. Okay, last two, Matt. Are you looking at working as a closer now? You, you uh, talked about Evaldi before, but he's been the guy. Are you, are you comfortable with him staying there? Well, I don't. You'll have to ask Alex that question. He's the one that makes out who the, the closer is. I, I never thought it was the right day under the rules. Nobody ever asked me, so <laughs> I've never thought this was the right day. I think it should be later, personally, but nobody asked us. Given, given the way your stars have performed, um, kind of underwhelming, mm -hmm. um, and you said they have to play better, but mm -hmm. personally, like Chris Sales, it, it's August now. Is there a concern there that he's still searching? He's still kind of trying to look for it? Well... He's, there's been some really good starts, and there's been some not-so-good starts. And sure, we're all concerned, but I think the most important part is when you have a good starting pitcher and we think he's good, um, is that they're healthy, and he is. And now we need to fix his mechanics to get through that. And he's had a way of just not being a consistent year and falling in and out of his mechanics. I, I, you know, we work on it all the time. We've got all type of information. So we need to get that right. We need to get him right. We need to get David Price right. I mean, you, David Price threw the ball good velocity last night. I mean, a lot of pitches down the middle to strike some, which he normally doesn't, which I know they talked about. We need to be able to help fix those type of things. We need to get Rick Porcello pitched better last time. And you know, So, yeah, I mean, you're always working on those things. But, you know, that's our jobs. And, and it's easier to say to switch people than it is sometimes it's easier to say that, but sometimes you need to fix the people you have. And I, I mean, I remember last year in the same time period, and just to give you an example, it goes either way. Last year at this same time period, everybody wanted to run Joe Kelly out of town. He, he did not pitch well, and it was an extended period. Pitched great the first couple months, had a real struggling middle period. And 
but he's very talented. And sometimes you got to try to work with the guy, help the guy get him to that point. And when we got to the postseason, he was dominant, outstanding. So that's the type of thing where you need to work on those type of things as an organization. I know his numbers were bad, but I, you go through those things as an organization. I think we've had more of that with our pitching this year than we have in the past since I've been here. But I also think it's a very talented group and that uh, my belief is we'll get them straightened out.